Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdullah Kamel, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a live connection to the World Bank data. And since you're here, most likely you know what indicators you'd like to bring from the World Bank website. And the way to do that correctly is to search for World Bank API and then go to this link called uh, API Basic Call Structures. It will open a web page where there's multiple APIs here, but we are only interested in one. And that one is the one that gives multiple indicators. So you scroll down until you find multiple indicators. And we have an example here, an example link. So we just copy it. And after we copy the link, we go to Excel. In Excel, we go to data. And then from there, we go to get data from web. And once we get this window, we paste the link, we just copy it and we hit OK. And now Excel tells us what it could find. So basically it brought in this table and this means that our link is working fine. So the data is a table. The number of pages that was brought in is just one page, but the total pages are six that this link actually access. And then we have the per page records. They are 50 or limited to 50 at the moment. But the total that this link actually brings is 252. And this is the last updated date for uh, the data set. So let me explain the link. So the link is an API here, version two, and the country is China and Angola. So this is the example that they gave. And the indicators, there are two indicators separated by a semicolon and the source equals two. So this is something internal for the World Bank. Okay. What we are interested in is the countries here and the indicator code. And I will show you where to get that code. So now we're going to transform data. Okay. Because we're going to do some modification to the source link. So we hit transform data, Power Query Editor will open and it will uh, try to find what the column format are. So we're gonna delete this step. So we only left with source. Okay, so let's expand this table from this button here. And it gives us that these are the columns that it's gonna bring, okay? All right, so we remove the use original column name as prefix and we remove these columns. We don't want them. We just want the value, the date, the code, the country code and the country and the name of the indicator. And we hit OK. And as you can see here, we get all the data that we have, but we still need to expand the indicator and the country. So we expand the indicator name. It's going to give just one record, although it says a table here, just ignore it. So we keep the element text only and we hit OK. So it gives us the name of the indicator. As for the country, we do the same. We bring in the text so we know the name of the country. Now, although the country, we know from the source that the link actually brings in Angola and China. If we click on the filter here, we can only see Angola. And that's because the link actually have access to 252 records, which we saw here, but it is only limited to display 50 records. And that's why we cannot see China because we are only limited to 50, as you can see here. So what are we going to do? We're going to make some modification to change that. So uh, we're keeping the same indicators here and, and, and the source as well. So now we're going to use the percent and we're going to change the number of pages from 50 to 1000, for example. So we say pay underscore page equals to 1000. So this will modify our table and its ability to display more records. As you can see here, it changed now to 1000. And if we go to the last step here, we will see that the table now is able to display all 252 records. And when we scroll down, we can see that clearly here. So 
this is the last record that we have. And we start C in China. So we have Angola in China now correctly. Okay. Sometimes we, we don't want China and Angola. We need other countries. We can just write the code. Or if you want to have access to all the countries, you just write all instead of the country code and hit enter. Now we have another problem now. And that problem is the pair page records that we are able to display is 1000. But the, the link has access to or the total number of records for these indicators here for all the countries is 33,000 records. So we still are not able to display all the, the records that we have through this link. So what we can do, we can do something that makes things a little bit easier, which limit the range of the date. Because if we go to the last step, you can see that the data that is coming in, some of it is actually from the 60s. So we don't want that most of the time. So we're going to limit the dates. So we put the ampersand here and we write date equal to and let's say we are interested only from 2015 to 2024. And this is how you write this filter here in this link. And when you hit OK, you can see now the total number of records shrunk down to 4,256. Still above 1,000. So we just put this 10,000 per page just to cover that and future records as well. So if we go to the end now, you can see that we have all the countries now and we can load more here. And you can see all the countries that have data is actually here. Okay, so this is the basic call. Something we can, um, we can do to actually make the last table look a little bit better is just to uh, delete all of these. Uh, you don't need them. And we just right click on them and we hit remove. So we're left with a clean table now. And you can see some of the countries don't have data for some of the years. But on the other years, there are numbers here, as you can see. OK, so currently we have two indicators here which something to do with agricultural machinery and uh, population total. And um, let's say we are only uh, interested in one indicator, which is the population. So we can remove the other one and we hit enter. And same again, we only have just one indicator now. So let's load it and then add more indicators. OK, so as you can see here now, you have the table and you can work with it. So let's see how we can add more indicators. So to get the indicator codes, you need to uh, go to this page, data.worldbank.org, and then you can search uh, for a certain indicator or you can browse by country or indicator. So let's browse by indicator. And from here, you can see which one you, you want to uh, bring in. So if you click GDP growth, so as you can see here, we get the code now for this indicator here at the top in the address bar. So we just copy this. OK, and after we copy it, we go to Excel. And from here now we need to edit this query. So as you can see, our query is here. So uh, as you can see, we can edit it from here, or we go back from the same place. We go to data and get data and then launch Power Query. So we go back to the source now. And as you can see, we have only the total population. And what we're going to add, we're going to add the other indicator by putting a semicolon here. And we already covered the link, just paste it. So not the link, so the code for the indicator. And now we hit enter. And with this, as you can see, we brought it with the data and we can load more just to see. And as you can see here, we have GDP growth annual. You can apply this for any number of indicators and you can add more indicators by doing the same. Just put a semicolon, put the code, hit enter, and this is it. And this is how it goes.
Cool, now we're gonna load it, but always make sure that you have the correct number of per page records and compare that with the, the total records. So as you can see here, now we have how many? Mm. We have a lot of records, over 4,000, and we have the GDP growth and the population. And then you can create a pivot table or you can filter it by any country or do anything, right? So uh, now, of course, the good thing about this is in the future, like for the the date where we put the range from 2015 to 2024, we could have actually put 2030 so that whenever new values come in in the next few years, you don't have to go in and change the values for that range. And to get the new values, you just refresh all. And this will refresh the data from the website. And the, as you can see here, it will tell you how many rows uh, got loaded. So I hope uh, you guys find this uh, video useful and uh, see you.